Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. Let's get into Crito. So, where do you begin here? It can be very daunting when you fire it up and you look at this screen and you're wondering, what am I supposed to do? Well, first thing you should do is start a new project. Now, there are some buttons here to help you out. You can open something, uh, an image that you might want to work on or start a new project, or you can go to File and New. Then you do have some templates to draw from depending on what it is you're looking to work on, uh, the different sizing and different aspect ratios that match the kind of thing you're trying to do. I've just set up a bunch that I've used regularly in my predefined space, and this is really easy. If you have the pixel aspect ratio and what you're looking at right now is HD, uh, you can save that. So you can type that in, you can type in whatever name you want, and then click the Save button, and that will appear in your list of predefined things that you can pick from going forward. I've done a bunch of these. I have the 4K dimensions when I want to work in that aspect ratio. So I'd recommend setting up the ones that matter to you most. They're not all in there pre-baked. Uh, you do have to add a couple along the way, but this is just a quick and easy way where you can find what you want. All right, so do that first. Save the ones that you're going to be using and get started you create so before we get too far understand that there actually are a lot of things that critic can do it is most renowned for its ability for illustration and graphic design and drawing and digital painting but it can also do many other things very very well which you may not be aware of and i won't cover them so deep here but i'm making sure that you know about them you have animation and animation i'm just going to flip workspaces here Workspaces is a, is a layout of things, and we'll get to more about that in a second, but it's a layout that focuses on different things. There is an animation, which is 2D animation, and you can draw and create your own animation with it. Another thing that it can do is it actually can import raw photos. You can do basic photography editing. What I can do is I can grab, in my case, it's an NEF because I'm shooting with Nikon. I can grab that and I can drag that in. I'm just going to open it up as something new. It does have the preloader. I don't find that terribly useful, but just click OK. And then you can work on your raw pictures. Now, the capabilities are not as advanced as other photography focused tools. Probably the strongest thing, though, that you be able to do with a raw photo here is using the brushes to enhance it. Now that you know how to start something, you might want to set up your workspace around what you're doing. All right. And the way Critter frames it is it calls them dockers. Dockers are these boxes that are around it. Docker with the brushes, Docker with your layers. Those are all called Dockers. So to look at those, what you have to do is go to Settings and then Dockers, and you have a list of things. You can flip them on or off and see what they do. And there's some really interesting things. I, I minimized my setup so I can maximize my ability to work on something. But there's some really cool things here. The two that I recommend, though, that you find space for are the Snapshot docker this one here and the undo history down here for example if i take one right now and have a plus button here with a snapshot this is a moment i'm happy with i could make all kinds of changes here and work on it and hit a point where i could add another snapshot which is just fine you may hit a point where you look at it and say, I don't like that. So you can select the snapshot you want and then click the button here to restore back, rolling it all back effectively to that save point. Now, note that snapshots don't stay with you. They are only active while you're editing the picture. Once you close it, they all disappear. Remember, I took another snapshot where if I kind of have a moment where I said, oh, Eesh, I really actually did want most of what I did. I can revert back to that other snapshot just as easily to get back what I've done. The undo history will keep track of things that you are doing just as well. So I'm going to move things around. And you can see that it took note that I did a transform. It's That's the tool I'm using. And if I wanted to roll that back, I could just click back, in this case, to where I was and roll that back but you'll notice it's still there so if i change my mind or it, if i had a long list of things i could kind of pick 
somewhere in the middle of where I wanted to go through the history of what I've done. Now, the other one of those dockers I mentioned are the brushes. And there's a really a lot of brushes in Krita. The best way to get to know them really is just spend some time with them. Build a relationship with those brushes. And what I mean by that is try them out one at a time and see what kind of texture that they produce because everyone is going to be a little bit different. Another thing to consider is that if you're going to use a tablet, a lot of these are pressure sensitive aware. So that'll change the texture a little bit too. And there's all kinds of tools. There's pens, there is charcoal, there is ink, there are brushes, there are sponges. As you start to think about what you're going to create, you could find the best fit tool. Brush controls. Those are typically along the top. And I'll just mention a couple things. The opacity up here is different um, from the opacity over here. This one controls the opacity of the brush you're currently using. And also this size in pixels is how large the brush tip will be. So let's go to that. And you'll notice as I step that up, the size, the tip of my brush is changing. So I can paint something here in a layer and put that down. And then I could make adjustments where I can bring down the opacity and paint with a lower opacity. The last thing, which is really, really cool, is you can put any brush across Krita into eraser mode. So I can flip this button right here with the brush I'm on, and I could, within the layer I'm in, just start working those off. Noting that it's going to obey these settings. I need to put opacity perhaps up to full, and I'll work on my things a little bit more aggressively, but it'll erase as if that brush that texture became an eraser. So you were erasing with that texture versus drawing with it. It's a really, really awesome idea. It's a really cool way to tone back things to make uh, a secondary texture <laughs> with the brush. So another powerful piece of Krita is its ability to do layers. You can create stacks of drawings that overlay each other, but don't affect each other. I'll note that this layout is my layout. I've tweaked things a little bit, so you may see them in different places. This is just where I like to have them. I'm going to add what's called a paint layer here. Just a blank thing. You can't even see it except that it popped up over here. I'm going to look at a brush. And when I pick at a brush, it may have some options, by the way, that can affect what it can do. Certain tools that you use will have options under tool options. And I'm going to put it in that layer. And I now have the ability to treat that layer independently, where I can use the eyeball to turn it off. Or if I was going to use the transform tool, I could move just that layer by itself. It's a very powerful way to create uh, complex things, but still have a high degree of control over the elements in that picture in case you need to tweak things along the way. Another way of treating layers so it doesn't get uh, really crazy, because you can get up to the hundreds of layers, it just it can get enormous, is you can make groups. So I'm going to make another layer here. I'm going to select the top two holding shift. Um, I can select multiple ones or I can hold control, just kind of how you select multiple items in any other tool. And then I right click that group, quick group. And now I have them, they're still independent layers, because this is an important point. You can still work on them independently, but I can also work on them as a group. If I wanted to move all those things or work on that group as one, whatever's in that group, I can now move just by selecting the group versus one of the layers down below. Your opacity control is also above the layers. So if you need to take things down a notch, if it's too brilliant uh, or if you just want to be able to have it translucent or mostly transparent, that's where you do that. You've created a masterpiece as I have done here. This is a one of a kind NFT. Got to get this out somewhere. OK, so let's talk about how we actually preserve and get this out of Krita. All right. So I'm going to go to File, Save As. And if you've been working on layers and things, if you've added stuff to it, it's going to suggest the Krita document. That is a very friendly document if you intend to keep working on it because it will maintain layers, it will maintain the uh, the changes that you've done, and it'll keep it in more of an open, editable format. I'd recommend you do that regardless of whether you're not going to take this and consider it done. Save it as a Krita document and then do another save as and consider something appropriate like a JPEG, 
like a ping, uh, if it has transparency, PNGs are great for that. It'll maintain that layer transparency. So that pretty much covers all the basics. There is a world of things that you can do in Krita. Uh, this is just scratching the surface, but it is enough where you could get your hands dirty, play with Krita, and start to understand these basic tools. This is Photo Learningism. I'm Nate. If this was useful, please give me a thumbs up. Also, subscribe if you haven't done that already, and leave a comment, ask a question, and we'll help you find the answers to the best of our ability. And i see you again at the next video. Thank you so much for your support and for watching this video. I love you all. I'll catch you again later.